What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Creative Anger DIY tutorial. You're here because you want a better solution. You don't want to sit down at your computer, slice up your 3D model, and have to babysit the 3D printing process. You want a standalone solution that will run your prints while letting you monitor things as you see fit. You want to improve your workflow, and you want to free up your computer to do things while your print runs, like play games, edit video, or even watch porn. It's not a bong that goes somewhere else. This is where Octoprint comes in, and today, I'll show you how to get Octoprint up and running on your Raspberry Pi. Octoprint is a pretty badass program. Think of it as a print server, but instead of running your old inkjet printer, it runs your brand new 3D printer. It gives you full remote control, monitoring, webcam streaming so you can watch your 3D prints as they're printing, and offers a large list of third-party plugins to extend the functionality. Best yet, it's 100% open source. Octoprint can be installed on any platform ranging from Windows to Mac to Linux. Today we'll talk about getting it up and running on a Raspberry Pi. Here's what you'll need to get started. You'll need a Raspberry Pi, a USB keyboard, an ethernet cable, a computer monitor and HDMI cable to plug into the Raspberry Pi, an SD card, an SD card reader, and a power adapter and cord. I would definitely recommend a case for your Raspberry Pi, but live a little. Get Octoprint up and running and then use it to print your Raspberry Pi case. The easiest way to get up and running is to use an operating system such as Octopi. It's a pre-compiled version of Raspbian Linux that has Octoprint installed on it by default. You can also purchase a prefabricated Octoprint kit, but where's the fun in that? This is a channel that's all about DIY after all. Best yet, once it's up and running, we'll set up Cura so it can print directly to your Octoprint installation, eliminating the need for file transfers entirely. First up, we'll visit octoprint.org. Click the download link at the top of the page, and then click Download Octopi. While that downloads, we'll also need to download a really simple utility to take the Octopi image file and burn it to your SD card as a usable, bootable drive. We'll visit etcher.io. This website should auto-detect your operating system and offer you a giant blue download link at the top of the page. Click that link, download etcher, get it installed. You'll probably have a few minutes to do this as the Octopi download is about 490 megabytes in size. Once you've got Octopi downloaded, open the zip file, extract the .image file to a place where you can find it easily. Now we take the SD card and plug it into the memory card reader. If there's something on the SD card, keep in mind that it will be formatted and all data will be lost. I'm not responsible for you not backing up your data. In Etcher, Locate your .image file that contains Octopi. You tell Etcher which drive to install Octopi to, and then click Flash. It'll take a few minutes, but it's well worth the wait. Once burned, take the SD card and insert it into your Raspberry Pi's SD card slot. Plug in an Ethernet cable and keyboard, power up the Raspberry Pi, and you're almost done with the hard part. At this point, there are two ways to move forward. You can plug the Raspberry Pi into a computer monitor to see the IP address that is assigned to the unit, or we can use alternate methods of discovering the IP address. In this tutorial, I'm going to assume you're able to hook the Raspberry Pi up to a computer monitor. However, in this tutorial, linked on the screen, I show some alternate methods of locating your Raspberry Pi on your network without needing to plug it into a computer monitor. Once the operating system loads, the hostname and IP address show up on your screen directly above the login prompt. Jot down the IP address and head back to the computer you've been working from. Crack open your favorite browser such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc. and type in http colon slash slash your IP address. In my case, it would be http colon slash slash 10.1.10.152 as that's the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. The first time you access that web page, you'll be welcomed with a setup wizard. The first page is a welcome page that lets you know you're about to set up Octoprint. Go ahead and click Next on the bottom of the window. From here, you enter in a username and password that you want to use to access your Octoprint installation. 
I strongly recommend using this feature. It keeps other people on your network from screwing with your 3D prints. Once you enter in a username and password, you then click Keep Access Control Enabled. If you don't want to use Access Control, you can click Disable Access Control. Now, click Next again. This page lets you set up slicing profiles for the Cura engine embedded within Octoprint. We're going to skip this step, as the feature will be covered in a separate video at a later time. Go ahead and click Next, unless you already know what you're doing and you've got a slicer profile ready to go. Now, we're at the final step of the initial setup. There are four tabs on this page. General, Print Bed and Build Volume, Axis, and Hot End and Extruder. Give your printer a name and model. The name is designed to be a name you'll personally remember, whereas the model is the name of your printer as provided by your manufacturer. Next, click on Print Bed and Build Volume. Don't click the Next button at the bottom of the page. I promise you, the page won't lose any of your information. Here is where you start to enter your printer's information. For most users with non-Delta printers, a form factor of rectangular and an origin of lower left will more than suffice. If you have a heated bed, go ahead and check that box. Next, enter your X, Y, and Z maximum travel lengths into the appropriate boxes. In my case, I have a mono price maker ultimate, so the values would be 200 by 200 by 175. I also have a heated print bed. If you have custom bounding box settings to enter in, click on the appropriate checkbox and fill in the information. If you don't know anything about custom bounding boxes, you probably don't need to worry about that setting. Next, we'll click on axes at the top. I personally left all of the settings on this page at their default. I override these settings in the G code that's generated by Cura. However, the defaults of 6,000 millimeters per minute is the same as saying 100 millimeters per second. That's a solid upper limit. It'll help prevent stringing during travel times, so it doesn't hurt to just leave it. Finally, we'll click on Hot End and Extruder. Set your nozzle diameter and extruder count here. My printer utilizes a 0.4 millimeter extruder nozzle and has only one extruder. As such, I'll be leaving the defaults in place. Now, you finally get to hit that blue button that says next at the bottom of the window. Then, you get to click Finish. It'll pop up a window asking you to reload Click on the big blue reload button. Hey, look at that. You've got Octoprint installed and running on your Raspberry Pi. It took all of what, 15, 20 minutes start to finish? That's really not too bad. When you consider you just downloaded an operating system, burned it to an SD card, installed it on a computer, configured that computer, and can now use it, that's pretty impressive. It's at this point I recommend pushing any further network connection settings to the Raspberry Pi, such as connecting the unit to Wi-Fi. Linked on the screen is my quick video tutorial of how to set up a Wi-Fi connection with a static IP address on a Raspberry Pi. If you're still hooked up to a computer monitor, now is definitely the time to get this done. Otherwise, it can be performed via SSH at any time later on. Once you've got your network set up the way you want it, whether it be Wi-Fi or Ethernet, go ahead and set up your Raspberry Pi next to your 3D printer. Plug the printer into an available USB port, boot up the Raspberry Pi again, and voila! Once your Raspberry Pi boots up, it should auto-connect to your printer, assuming the printer is on when the Raspberry Pi turns on. Now that you're set up and installed, we can move on to the final step that we're going to cover in this video. Configuring Cura to communicate directly with Octoprint. This process is super simple. At the top of the Octoprint screen, you'll see a little icon of a wrench. Click that wrench. On the left side of the window, you'll click API. You copy the API key, and in a moment, we'll be pasting it into Cura directly. Crack open Cura, open up your preferences window, and then click on printers. Select the printer you want to connect to over the network using Octoprint, and then click connect Octoprint. If it doesn't automatically detect your installation, don't worry. We have all the information you need. If Octoprint wasn't automatically detected, click the add button. Give it a name, type in the IP address of the installation, and leave the port and path alone. Then click OK. Once the window closes, it'll ask you to provide the API key. If Octoprint was automatically detected, enter in your API key. The three options displayed are pretty self-evident. Set them however you decide. Click OK, and now you're done. You can now start printing from Octoprint using either its web interface or from within Cura directly. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. 
every little bit of interaction we get with our users helps us out quite a lot. Until next time, see ya.